Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. How are you doing tonight? Man, it's so good to have each and every single one of you here with us. I'm so grateful that you're with us on Christmas Eve. For those of you that maybe this is your first experience with Mana Church, welcome to the Christmas Eve candlelight service of Mana Church. My name is Joe Adams. I'm the lead pastor here at Mana Church and really just so excited to be gathering together tonight as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. And tonight, really the theme of my message is a phrase that I'm stealing from a pretty popular Christmas carol. It's the phrase, all is calm. All is calm. And I'm stealing that line from a carol written in 1816 by a Roman Catholic priest named Joseph Moore. And if you are familiar with that phrase, maybe you're trying to think of which carol that is right now, it's the Christmas carol, Silent Night. It's probably one of the most famous Christmas carols of all time. I think it would at least reach the top 10 list of most people around the world. And there's a particular line in that carol that says, Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. In fact, we're going to sing this carol at the very end of our service. In fact, I've been looking forward to this all week long of this candlelight moment together. I think it's going to be really powerful. And we're going to sing Silent Night as a part of that. And, but that song... Its obvious focus is on the night of Jesus' birth, and it conveys to the listener a quiet, tranquil, almost lullaby sort of feel. And you know, I'm sure that a portion of that night was just that. But I'm also pretty confident that that night did not start that way. Like, we just need to keep in mind here tonight that Jesus was birthed in a stall, in a manger, full of animals with animal sounds and animal noises. If you ask me, not quite the making of a lullaby moment. And we should also keep in mind that Jesus was in fact birthed. Like how many of you in this room have ever been witness to or participated in a live birth before in your life? Hands up, all around the room, hands up. You've seen that? Okay, how many of you know there is nothing calm or tranquil about that moment? Nothing, now think about this. This was 2000 years ago. Mary was in a manger. She did not have a nurse with her. She did not have a midwife. She did not have an epidural, ladies. It was just little old Mary trying to get baby Jesus out. And here's the worst part about it for me, is Mary could not even, in the moment of labor and pain, reach up, grab her husband by the face, and say, Joseph, you did this to me. Because he didn't. God did it. And so I think at least for the first eight to 10 hours of that night, there was anything but calm or silent or tranquil. But you know, I'm sure that the song also got it right too. And I could just imagine as the stars sparkled above, Jesus and his mother drifting off into a deep, satisfying sleep as heaven smiled at the realization that the world had changed forever. So, you know, something else was going on that night, and that was anything but silent. In fact, I want to read this portion of Scripture to you. It comes out of the book of Luke in chapter 2. We're going to start in verse 8 and go through verse 20. And it says this. It says, in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. 
But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had, that all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Now, this is a pretty common passage of scripture that you may have heard read at many different Christmas Eve experiences. And I want to take a moment tonight and just unpack three particular lines of scripture from this passage to help us understand why Christmas is such a big deal. Like, why is it that we celebrate the birth of Jesus every single year? Well, that first line of scripture I want to point out to you is found in verse 10. And as the angel proclaiming to the shepherds, he told them, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. You know, the thing about good news is that good news is only good if it makes somebody's situation better, right? If otherwise, if it doesn't make somebody's situation better, it's just news. Or on the other hand, if it would make your situation worse, it would be considered bad news. You guys are on it tonight. But the angel didn't say, I bring you bad news. He didn't say, I just bring you plain old news. He said, I brought you, I'm bringing you good news. So I can't help but wonder, what situation do these shepherds find themselves in that they would need good news? And if you'll read that line again, read it a little more closely, you'll notice that the good news is not just for the shepherds, but it's for all people. It's for everyone. So what kind of situation do these shepherds, as well as you and I and everyone else in the world, what what kind of situation do we all find ourselves in that we would need this kind of good news? Well, that's actually the bad news. You see, the bad news is that every single one of us have come into this world separated from God. See, there's this sad but powerful three-letter word that's done us all in. It's called sin. And if you think about that idea, that word, that sin, who hasn't sinned? And if you were tempted to raise your hand and say, Joe, that's me, no problem. I'd tell you what your sin is right then and there. Like we can, we can deal with pride right now. <laughs> no, we've all sinned. We've all fallen short. We, we're all in this situation together. But to make matters worse, we'll all have to pay for what we've done. There's a consequence for our sin. Why? Well, because God is a just God. And justice for sin must be satisfied. Our sin must be accounted for. Otherwise, God would be unjust. And what the scripture tells us in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23, it says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then it goes on to tell us that the penalty of our sin, the consequences of sin in our life is death. That's some bad news. That we're all born into this world separated from God and and every sin that we've committed must be accounted for. It must be paid for. But God devised a way out. And that's the good news of a great joy. That there is an answer for our sin problem. That we are not going to have to pay for our sin. Isn't that good news? Is that good news to anybody tonight? That is good news for all of us in this room. It's good news for all people. The question is, what is this way out? What is this way that God has devised? Well, let's look at this second line of scripture I wanna bring to your attention. It's actually the very next verse, found in verse 11. And it says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior, who is Christ the Lord. See that word savior, means a rescuer. It's the one who has come to get us out of our sin problem. And to the ones who were listening to the angels that night, it it probably sounded like someone was now here who would make things right. Somebody had now come onto the scene that could somehow stand in the gap between God and us and make some sort of sacrifice that would satisfy God's justice. In fact, there's a a savior, a Messiah, who by the way, the Jewish people had been longing for, looking for, waiting for, but I'm not sure that these shepherds had the full picture. See, the common belief of that time was that this savior, this Messiah, would come to 
restore the people of Israel back to their place of prominence. They were expecting someone to to come along to bring that nation back to where they were. But the truth is God had something much bigger and much greater in mind. What we learn here is that this Savior isn't just any Savior. This Savior is Christ the Lord. This is important. He is God himself. And yet something very special has happened this night because God himself has become a human and is now sleeping in a manger. See, we find out later in the first four books of the New Testament that this Savior grows up to become a man. And this man named Jesus will offer a sacrifice, but not just any sacrifice, he is the sacrifice. See, his journey through life leads him to a cross where he becomes the sacrifice that pays for us forever the penalty of our sins. And in so doing, Jesus reconciles us to God. He restores our relationship with God that has been lost. So through the sacrifice of Jesus, his own life for our sins, the justice of God has been satisfied. Our sin has been paid for so that we don't have to pay for it ourselves. This is indeed good news of a great joy. But God knows that not all will receive this sacrifice. Not everyone is gonna seek a solution to their sin problem, not not everyone will desire to put an end to the hostility between them and God caused by our sin. And yet God offers this opportunity to every single one of us. A third line of scripture that I wanna bring to your attention is found in verse 14. Here's what the angels sang together. They said, on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. I believe There are many of you in the room tonight that need to hear this. There is peace for your life. There is peace from the struggles that you are wrestling with. There is peace in the midst of the situations that you find yourself in. There is a solution to our sin problem. There is an end to the hostility between us and God that has been caused by our sin. There is peace on this earth and this life right now but if you go back and read that verse it says but it is only among those with whom God is pleased it's only available to those whom God is pleased with and I don't know about you but when I I read a line like that when I read what seems to be a conditional statement like that the question that comes to my mind is well then how in the world do I please God that's the question isn't it If this peace is available to those who please God, how do I please him? And people over thousands of years have answered this question in many different ways. And you may be sitting in the room tonight and thinking, Joe, I know I need that peace. What do I have to do? Well, well, should I become more religious? No. No, see, Jesus rebuked religious people more than anyone else in the Bible. Maybe thinking, well, Joe, if that's not it, maybe I should become a better person. No. See, the Bible tells us that we cannot, by our own efforts, convert our own nature. Okay, Joe, if if that's not it, maybe I should work harder. And I should get my, my good deeds to outweigh my bad deeds. And when God looks at my life and he sees that I've got more good than I've got bad, maybe then he'll be pleased with me. No, that's not gonna do it either. See, the Bible tells us that we cannot be saved by our own works. Even one sin in our life separates us from God for an eternity. Okay, Joe, well, maybe I should join a church. Is that what you want me to do? You want me to join a church? Maybe, maybe start serving? No, that's not it either. Well, I think that's a great thing to do. And if you happen to be here tonight looking for a church, I hope that you will give us a shot but that's not gonna do it. Joining a church and serving with our time, that's not gonna make us right with God. So what'll do it? What then must we do to make peace with God? 
Well, the Bible is actually pretty clear. We need to confess. We need to confess that we've sinned against him. Confess that we're helpless to change ourselves. Confess that we need his saving grace in our lives. We just need to confess. When we confess, we make a simple trade. See, Jesus lived a perfect life without sin so that he could offer his life as a sacrifice for every single one of us in this room. He gave his life for yours, for mine, that we might give our life to him. And when we make that trade, when we surrender our life to him, what God does is he takes our sin and he gives us his life, a new life, a fresh life, restoring our relationship with him and leaving you at peace with God. So what's the big deal about Christmas? What is it that we're even celebrating tonight? What is it that we're gonna celebrate tomorrow? We're celebrating the day that God humbled himself to become a man so that he could set into motion a plan that would save every single person that would simply repent of their sin and put their faith in him. Because in that moment, when you confess your sin in repentance, when you put your faith in Jesus and what he has done for you, in that moment, you're at peace with God. And then forever, between you and God, all is gone. Let me pray for you tonight. Father, I thank you that you went to such great lengths to cause our relationship with you to be restored. God, thank you that you loved us so much that you would give your own son to be born into this world full of pain and heartache. And that he would willingly give everything, his whole life, to pay the penalty of sin in our lives that we deserve to pay. Jesus, tonight, we honor you. We praise you. We thank you for who you are and what you've done for us. We, we don't take this holiday for granted. We don't take what you did for us for granted. We thank you that you would go to such extreme lengths so that we could have a new relationship with you that we could spend an eternity in heaven with you one day. We love you. In the name of Jesus. Listen, if you just keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed in this room for just a little bit longer, I don't want to leave here today without giving an opportunity to those of you that have not received this new life that Jesus came to this earth to purchase for you. For those of you that have not received the forgiveness of your sins. You're carrying those things around. Maybe, maybe you've been living your whole life trying to do enough good things to outweigh your bad deeds. I wanna tell you right now that you can stop trying to be perfect. You just need to receive what Jesus has already done for you. When we begin that relationship with him, he changes everything. And will you begin to do good deeds? Yes. But that comes as Jesus transforms our hearts as we live in a loving relationship with him. Our, our response is, how can we not? But you need to know that there is nothing that you can do to restore your relationship with God. Only God can do that. That's why we're celebrating the birth of Jesus tonight because it was through Jesus that he made a way. So what I wanna do tonight for those of you that haven't received the forgiveness of your sins, those of you who haven't received this new life that Jesus purchased for you, I wanna give you an opportunity to do that. And the way that you do that is simply what I just talked about, confessing of your sin, repenting of your sin, and trusting in Jesus. And 
what I wanna do is I wanna just lead you in a prayer to do that very thing tonight. And my promise to you is the same promise that I make every single Sunday. And that's that we're not gonna single any of you out in front of a bunch of other people. I'm not gonna make you stand, stand up or come down to the front to pray this prayer. I simply wanna lead you in this prayer. And you can pray it out loud or in your heart. It doesn't matter to me because this is between you and God. But if you're here tonight and you're saying, Joe, that's me in a moment, I'm gonna lead you in this prayer. And I'm also gonna ask if you wanna get on that prayer that in a moment, not yet, but in a moment, you would just raise your hand high enough and long enough for me to see it. I'd just love to see who I'm praying with tonight. But that's why everybody else is gonna have their heads bowed and their eyes closed. If you guys could just keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. And if you're here tonight and you're saying, Joe, I need to get in on this. Joe, I need to begin that relationship with Jesus. I need to receive the forgiveness of my sins. All around this room with heads bowed and eyes closed. If that's you tonight, would you just raise your hand right now where I can see it all around the room. Come on, all over this place. I see those hands going up. Just raise it up long enough for me to see it. That's us. You guys go ahead and put your hands back down. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna lead you in this prayer. Again, you can pray it out loud or in your heart. Doesn't matter, but say this with me. Say, Jesus, I know that I've sinned. And I'm sorry. I repent for my sin. I confess my sin to you. And I thank you. You were born to live a life without sin so that you could go to a cross to pay the penalty of my sin on my behalf. I receive your forgiveness. And I believe that you were buried and raised to life three days later to bring me new life. I receive the new life that you have secured for me. Please help me to follow you all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. And amen, man of church family, can we just celebrate with every single person that prayed that prayer tonight? Listen, there is no greater decision that you could ever make then to begin that relationship with Jesus, it changes everything. Listen, we're gonna do a couple things before we finish up the service with our candlelight moment. And one of those things that we're gonna do is we are gonna take up an offering tonight. And so I wanna go ahead and invite the host team to get in position. And listen, we're not, we're, not, we're not doing this because we need more money or we're asking you to give. In fact, the main reason we're doing this is because I'd love to get those connection cards from you. For those of you that are here for the very first time, you do me a favor and just get that connection card ready when these offering buckets pass by you could drop it in there and then i want to speak especially to those of you that prayed that prayer at the very end with me whether you raised your hand or not on that connection card that's in your seat on the bottom of it there's a little box that you can check it says i've committed my life to jesus i'm renewing my commitment to jesus if you made one of those decisions tonight would you just take a moment and grab that card and check the box that best represents the decision that you made and when these offering buckets come by you can place that connection card in that bucket. And so in just a moment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pray for this offering. If you came prepared to give, you guys can get that ready as well. I'm gonna pray for this offering and then we're gonna pass these buckets and then I'm gonna give you some further instructions for candle lighting. So Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us. God, we thank you that you're a gracious, generous God towards us. And Lord, tonight we just come before you and we say, God, you are first in our lives. In every area of life, God, we wanna put you first. Lord, we know that your word says that you love a cheerful giver. So Lord, it is with cheerfulness in our hearts that we do give a portion of what you have so graciously and generously provided for us. God, I just ask that you would cause us to be good stewards of the resources that you bring in to advance your kingdom right here in the city of Colorado Springs and to the ends of the earth. God, would you bless this offering? Would you bless those as they give? Would you multiply back in the name of Jesus? Amen. As those buckets come by, once they come by your row, what you want to do is you want to grab that candle and then you can go ahead and stand up. Parents, this is the time to grab those glow sticks for your kids. What we're going to do is we're going to sing this song one more time together and then I'm going to give you some instructions for the candle lighting portion. Come on, let's sing this out.
right, so here's what we're gonna do. Our host team is gonna start making their way forward and they're gonna have uh, a candle or some kind of lighter. They're gonna have a lighter and they're gonna light the candles on the ends of each row. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pass that flame down to the person next to you. And I wanna give a quick instruction so we don't burn down this 100 year old building because the city of Colorado Springs would not be happy with us. So here's how we're gonna do this. If, you're, if your candle is lit, then the person, you, you keep that thing holding straight up, all right? Don't move that thing. We don't need wax dripping everywhere. So you hold it straight up. And then the other person, see this? Come on now, we thought this through. And the other person comes to it, gets the flame and then passes. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, you guys are a smart crew, you got that. So we're gonna do that. The reason that we do candle lighting on Christmas Eve, you know, the, the Gospel of John tells us that Jesus came as the light of the world. He came to bring light into the world. And then Jesus would say in what's known as his Sermon on the Mount, one of the most famous moments. Yeah, you guys could go ahead and get started. And Jesus said that we are the light of the world. And so what this really symbolizes is as we get that flame, it's like Jesus coming to live with us. And then that flame, that light becomes visible to those around us and we begin to pass that thing. We're the light of the world, bringing the light of Christ to the people around us. And so what I'm gonna do is, as we start this procession of candle lighting all around the room, we're gonna black out the lights in just a moment. It's gonna go black and I just wanna watch, I want you guys to watch how this thing spreads all throughout this room. So you guys go ahead and black out those lights. Take a look at this, it's a powerful moment. Watch this light spread. It's amazing how bright one little light can be. How brightly it shines in the darkness. That's what Jesus did for us. He came to bring light to the world. And that light was the life of men. He's bringing new life, fresh life. Do me a favor so that people in the back can see this. Everybody just lift your candles up for a moment. Powerful, isn't it? The light and life of Christ and all of our young people have their glow sticks. You guys lift those things high too. Such a powerful moment. Here's what we're gonna do. You can bring them back down. We're gonna sing Silent Night together. I just wanna encourage you. Sing this with your whole heart. Thanking God for the peace that he has made for you. Come on, let's sing this together.
Well, as we wrap up tonight, I just want to thank you guys for joining us for a Christmas Eve service. I do want to remind you that next Sunday, December 29th, we will not be having a service on a Sunday morning. Instead, you can join us on our Facebook Live page at 10 a.m. We'd love to see you there online. You can sleep in a little bit on that Sunday. And I want to give a special shout out to all the parents in the room who have little children. You guys are the superheroes tonight. You made it. Well done. Again, Merry Christmas to every single one of you. We can't wait to see you in the new year. We're going to be kicking off a brand new sermon series that we're calling New Year, New You with a question mark because it's up to you. So really excited about that. Merry Christmas, everyone. Have a great, fantastic day tomorrow. We'll see you in 2020.